So without further ado, I'd like to welcome to the stage our first speaker, my friend, our leader, CEO and president, Rich Falcone. Hello, John. No, 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 no. <laughs> Not the one time thing. Man, we uh, off to a good start. Marketing's on fire. Metallica, Biggie, but wait till you see what finance walks out to. There ain't, if I've learned one thing from Cyrus, it's there ain't no party like a finance party. Thank you guys for coming out. We have got to again say thank you to the marketing team. I can't, we're in here last night, all this lighting and the fake fire. That, we, don't have a, a, we don't have a crew that does that. That's all them just learning on the job and, and going above and beyond and coloring outside the line. So can we please get a clap for marketing. Second, this has been a really humbling three years for myself, the leadership team, but we couldn't accomplish anything without the people in the room. So give yourselves a round of applause, please. All right, so what is going on? What is going on? Uh, a lot is going on. We got a lot of inbound requests about the recession. How CDI is gonna react to it? What's our plan? So let me address that directly. All right, so first of all, unfortunately, there's been a lot of bad news in the media and in other organizations, and that's unfortunate. And if you know anyone in these organizations or your families or friends have been impacted, obviously, you know, we hope that that remedies itself, <coughs> excuse me, sooner than later. But the bottom line is it hasn't really impacted CDI the way you're seeing in the unfortunate news lines here. So the question becomes why, right? It's not because we don't think about it. It's not because we don't manage to it. It's because, in my mind, of our, our strategy and our mentality. I think that if you have a great strategy and a poor mentality, you're halfway there, right? You're like Bon Jovi, right? If you have a great mentality and a poor strategy, you still got the same problem. So I want to double click on, on both of those for CDI real quick. So CDI's strategy, it's right here. If you have any questions, please ask in your breakout sessions. We're going to continue to modernize what we call the core. Right? Going forward in this macro economy, people do not want to partner with or invest in companies that are promising future profits and future dreams and future innovation. And that's what's causing all the layoffs, because a lot of that is futuristic revenue. Cash is sort of king, again, which means sound businesses that have been performing for 25 years are uh, of interest and of value to customers to do business with. So if you look at our core, our hybrid cloud infrastructure, again, these map to the pillars that we're all familiar with. We've been doing that for 25 years. Now it's changed, right, from vBlocks and VMware to hyperscalers and, and containers, but we've always modernized and kept up with that change. We've managed that hybrid cloud infrastructure with intelligent operations for 25 years, whether that's, you know, OpsRamp and now Logic Monitor and Big Panda and things like that, <coughs> excuse me. And we've always helped in the digital workspace, right, whether it's Unified collaboration, UCAS, now it's worked from anywhere, but we've always had that core that we have modernized and kept up with what's going on, right? So could I ask, if you're in the HCI team, pre-sales, post-sales, if you touch HCI at all, could you please stand up? Sales rep, delivery, sale, if you work in the HCI business unit at CDI, could you please stand up? Round of applause. So that's our core, and we're always gonna modernize that core, but we always have to think, where is the puck going next? And that's where we transform and where we invest, right? So in 2020, we started our digital business unit, which now is a $100 million business unit, helping customers interact with their customers, interact with their employees, and it's really become a booming business for CDI. So if you're in the digital workspace, excuse me, digital unit at CDI, please stand up. Pre-sales, post-sales, delivery, $100 million business unit for CDI. In 2020, we started our security division, helping with vulnerability threat, threat, uh, threat sectors, tabletop exercises, pen tests. Again, that's another transformation for CDI, not something we had done before. That is now a $100 million business. Please stand up if you're in the security division at CDI. So again, what is our strategy? We're gonna modernize the core, HCI, intelligent operations, digital workspace, we're gonna to transform together with digital security and modern applications. Now facts matter, okay, they do. Look at the bottom of this sheet. Business in 30 countries, seven part of the year awards, no dependence on any OEM, I'll get into that later. 4.7 Glassdoor, if you wanna go on Glassdoor, if you like the kickoff, wanna say you liked it, 
If you didn't like it, that's cool too, right? We can't fix a problem that we don't know about. But we, we shine well in these surveys, right? 16% CAGR since 2010 and 11,000 completed projects. That is what, to me, our strategy makes CDI built different and built better. Thank you. And again, if you have questions on this in the breakout sessions, fire away. Like, let's have an open conversation. So now our mentality, okay? Since 2019, we have been dealt, we all have been dealt, not the best hand, right? It hasn't been easy. Global pandemic, geopolitical tension, supply chain crisis right in our industry, at the heart of it, right? You would ask me if banks were gonna fail three weeks ago, I would've told you no, right? Yet again, a looming recession. But we didn't have, you know, a victim mentality about that. We didn't say, oh my God, what are we gonna do with this for the next few years? That's not what we did. This is what we did. We integrated seven businesses, we tripled our revenue, we went from 186 to 642 in employee count, went to 30 countries and seven part of the year awards. So we could have complained about the hand we were dealt, and instead we played the hand, and that's a mentality, in my opinion. So we have the right strategy, but we have the right mentality. And I think, again, that that built different, built better. Numbers don't lie, this is factual. So thank you for enabling this to happen, and playing the hand, and not complaining about the hand we were dealt. So, <laughs> what if we get dealt a bad hand? Might happen, not, not up to me, not up to anyone in this room. I believe in three recessionary outcomes. The first one I call the no recovery. So what happens there? Wrong decisions are made slowly. You can make a bad decision, but if you make it fast, you can fail fast. Culture's impacted, people get separated from the business. The sales team's not prepared. You know, with Jason at the helm, our sales team is always prepared. Frank and John and Sam, our technical delivery team stays together, stays intact. And in this example, this recovery just never happens. Sad, but Darwinistically true. Then there's a slow recovery, where you make some good decisions, some bad ones, culture's impacted here or there, morale's down, sales team wins some, loses some, delivery does okay, and the return to the status quo may never happen, but the culture's never the same. So they'll get back to where they were, but the place will never feel the way it felt, in my opinion. That's why I call this slow recovery. Then there's a common term called the hockey stick recovery, where you make the right decisions at the right time, culture improves, you keep the team together, sales has to have a no loss mentality in a recession, no losses. There's a deal, you have to win it. Delivery executes at an all time high, we keep the clients happy, and then I would argue in these times, you get closer as a business, you get closer as a company. And I've been through 2001, 2008, 2020, this will be my fourth recession at CDI, I've been here since 2001. And every time, this is what happened. These slides may look familiar to you. I put this up right at the start of the pandemic on a town hall. The same three slides, I didn't change one word. And this is what we did when the pandemic started. Oh, by the way, 2020 was the most revenue CDI had in its entire existence, because this is how we acted, and we didn't act like the prior two slides. So if the recession happens, this is what we're gonna do. For the fourth time since I've been here, we're gonna stay together, we're gonna fight, we're not gonna lose deals, delivery's gonna execute well, and we're gonna be better on the other side of it. That's the answer to the question, All right? And that's what we're gonna do. So built different, built better. I can't tell you how many hours we spent <laughs> trying to come up with. I felt like, you know, like Nike just do it. You gotta give them credit. They sell a commodity and their slogan doesn't even talk about their product. But it's the most famous slogan of all time, right? So we were trying to come up with something that didn't talk about tech that we thought described CDI. And I feel very passionate about this phrase, but let's talk about what that means to, to us and hopefully, hopefully you agree. So it starts with culture. So what does that mean? Can't measure it, can't put a number on it. But to me, it means the way the company treats you, the way your team treats you, and the way the person on the other end of the phone treats you. There's three things. If they all, should, should the they're all not good, then your culture is also not good. If they're good, your culture is good. So I can't, you know, there's 700 people in this room. I can't say if you all agree with that. I hope that you do. But we get a lot of feedback that our culture is one of the things that makes us different, makes us better. You do need data to run a business. It can't all be culture. As great as culture is, like, you need information. You need metrics, okay? So let's talk about organic and inorganic growth. CDI 2019, $300 million company. Bought seven companies, bought $300 million of revenue. So by simple math, we should be a $600 million company as of this meeting, okay, but we're not. We are a $900 million company because we grew $300 million in three years organically. We didn't buy that revenue. That was just execution. So last year, we were up here saying better together, better together. Well, I don't know, tell me, are we better together? <laughs> like, we, we created enough organic revenue to equal the size of CDI after 25 years. It took us 25 years to get the 300 million with the AT&T globe, where my daughter was always confused thinking I worked at AT&T. 
Then we bought $300 million of revenue. And then we just, just executed. The customer saw more value in us together. And now we're a $900 million business. I don't know if that resonates. I can't tell you how hard that is to do. We recreated the revenue of CDI just by working together. That's it. We didn't win a new huge account. It's just a better product, which means more opportunity for the people in the room. That's an amazing stat. And thank you for pulling that off. It's crazy. All right. So you also need balanced revenue growth. Like, what if all that revenue was with one customer? That's $300 million. Or one product, or one vendor. It's a big problem, right? It's a huge problem. So 10 years ago, for those of you who were here, we had a huge issue, like a massive problem. And we had it in four vectors, okay? We had a sales rep problem. There were two or three sales reps who were 70, 80% of the revenue. That's a big problem, okay? God forbid somebody, you know, leaves or whatever. Your whole company can go like this if two people decide they want to open a pizza shop, right? So it's a big issue with sales rep diversity because they do drive the revenue. Well, look at it now. I don't think we have one rep more than 7% of the business. I hope that rep is here forever. But if they're not, we're less vulnerable as a business. Back to how you weather the recession. So if something happens in that person's life, unfortunate, yes, but the company doesn't trickle down, right? At one point, a few of us were 70 to 80% of all of the revenue. When we bought the acquired companies, it's pretty similar, right? It's a big problem when you're trying to scale your business. Second problem was bookings by partner. So I couldn't be more passionate about the next 60 seconds. We have four sales forces at CDI. Core, managed, digital, and security. Every company we bought had one sales force. Nobody really does that in our space. All of our competitors, especially the larger ones, still, to this day, have one sales force. That model's dead, it's over, right? If the acquired sales reps in this company, do you guys feel, with the different sales forces, not so much as you have another sales rep, you have different value vectors and ecosystems that those other reps, manage, digital, security, are working in to bring value to your customers. So you, as the initial sales rep, become more valuable to your end user, therefore we all become more valuable to the end user, and you don't have, you're not beholden to anybody. So we have, you know, competitors who half their revenue is still from one vendor. That's crazy. What, ha what if something happens to that vendor? What, what if that vendor does a merger that no longer likes channel, you know, workflows? Like your whole company can, can go down if Dell or Cisco have a problem. That's a, that's a fool's errand, A. B, it's not a value to the customer. So we have the four sales forces, and look at this balance now. We don't have any reliant on partner A, B, C, or D. And this gets better and better and better every year because of that model. So to me, our specialty Salesforce model is our secret sauce. It what's enabled all the growth you saw on the prior slide. It's a key ingredient to what makes us build different, build better. So thank you to the specialty teams and the core teams. Also, the clients appreciate it more because they don't think you work for Dell or Cisco or VM, whatever. Like, we don't work for anyone. We work for ourselves and for our customers. That's it, right? I love our partners. We don't work for them. Right? We work with them when it makes sense. In terms of industry, same thing. Look at the balance. You know, finance, not having the best month, right? Not ideal, but you know, it used to be 80% of our business. Now it's 35. That's a lot better. It'll continue to get better as we continue to work with other companies and, and grow this business. But again, at one point at CDI, we were the same. We had one or two vendors that were half our revenue. We had one industry or two industries that were 70% of our revenue. So if you want to have a hard time in a recession, be relying on two people, two companies, or two industries. And we don't have that problem. So when I say like, you know, I'm pretty confident no matter what economic climate hits us, this is why. It's not just my opinion. There's data behind it. Same thing with customer. This is a beautiful rep. <laughs> makes me sleep at night as well, okay? I don't ever want to lose a client. But we've had years where a client was 20, 30, 40% of our business. I don't think it's more than 7%. So God forbid we lost our top client. It's not even less than 10% hit to our business. We'll be fine. The companies we acquired, again, CDI was no different, to be clear. We had the same issues. You have too much reliance on too few people, sales reps, industries, customers, vendors. So I, like, I'm calling victory. It took us 12 years to do this. We have to maintain it. But this has been one of the biggest accomplishments because it was by design. We said in 2010 we have four problems. And it took us almost 15 years to fix it. So thank you for everyone who did that. All right, so obviously built better, built different. It's been a theme, OK? What's the point? The point is. What I've been saying, it's a strong, resilient, diversified business across different industries, different people, different partners, different values, different sales forces. And that creates, number one, value to the customer, opportunity for people in the room, and you can weather storms. So in my opinion, during recessions, bad companies make bad decisions that affect good people. And some of the best people here, we hire during recessions because we take advantage of that. I mean, I, when there's a recession, honestly, we recruit. Because you can get people that maybe you couldn't get before that company made that mistake. So it's all your mindset, how you look at it. I don't want a recession, but I don't, oh, okay. If it happens, it's gonna be the fourth time, it'll be fun. Because of the data and because of the people. 
But that's what makes us different, what makes us better. Thank you. So we're diversified, strong, we're, we're spread out. Doesn't mean we're relevant. Well, it means we're relevant up to that point, okay? Doesn't mean we're relevant next month or next year. It just doesn't, right? That's the whole change mentality. So there isn't a, there's a relationship between complexity and time in IT, especially the last decade. So if I ask any customer we have, is your job harder than a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago? They all say the same thing. Yes, much harder. Why? They used to have a couple data centers, fail over, production to the yard, call it a day, more or less, right? Now they still have those data centers. They have five hyperscalers, seven SaaS clouds, all kinds of security things, backup, recovery. It's just, it's more spread out. Now they have technical debt, they have mainframe, they have new applications, they have containers. It's more to manage, it's different operating models. It's, it's very hard right now to be a CTO or CIO. Very difficult job right now. And therefore, IT operations has become harder. It's a harder job. And all of our customers tell us that every day of the week. So what's also harder? It's harder for the integrator to be of value because the problem is harder to solve. So if the problem is harder to solve, which it is, you have to be better. And that's why we combine these companies because together we've become more valuable. And it's not my opinion. Look at the data. Look at look what I just showed you. $300 million of organic revenue. Now, I realized last night this actually isn't a curve in this graph, but I still like it. Um, I know that's a bit maybe on the edge of, but that's how I feel. And it's how we feel and it's what we hear from our customers. Not all of our competition. We have phenomenal competition that definitely does a great job. But there is this, this um, Darwinistic deletion of companies in our industry through either failure or strategic combination, which, which makes sense, right? But I'm not going to name the account, but I was with Anthony, a huge financial account recently, and the, this one partner has been in there for 30 years doing $50 million a year, and we just asked them, like, are they still valuable to you? I know 10 years ago they were when they were setting up your storage and your network, but you just told me you want to roll out Kubernetes through a service portal leveraging automation across three clouds. Can they do that? No, they can't. So they're less relevant. CDI went the other way, right? We combined with organizations over the last three years, and just this is how we feel. So that's why we're growing the way we're growing. Every day we become more relevant. It's not a guarantee, right? You have to continually look at your service catalog, look at your engineering pool, and decide what you're going to do to be better next year. Right? You can't just say, we're good at this, and like that's it. So I think there's this inflection point. I think there's this relevance curve, although not a curve. It looks more like an X. I'm going to change the slide. Relevant X. But it's true, man. I'm telling you. Like, And if you're out there selling or delivering, I, I hope you feel it. But again, the, the, the numbers say so, what the numbers say. It's been a phenomenal experience. So what's the plan? Sometimes we get inbounds that people don't know what the plan is. It's a very fair question, but you can't know what the plan is. For, like I, I said this last year, I mean, Netflix was the greatest thing ever, mail and CDs, then streaming came out, right? Now Netflix is the king of streaming. So it's tough to say what five years from now looks like. I can tell you what this year looks like. We're gonna continue organic growth. We're gonna continue to hire the best people that treat each other well, that create a fun environment with opportunity. That's never gonna stop. We are gonna to look to do acquisition of both territory and skill set. Would you rather work for a company that's in Atlantic City doing what we're doing today and tonight, looking to expand geographies and aggressively grow, or be one that was on the newsreel that I showed before, right? And I think you'd rather be at the latter. And that's what we're gonna do. Right? We're gonna grow this business. However, we're not ever gonna acquire a company just for revenue. Right? We haven't done that. We're seven for seven. And we're not going to do that. The company will crack if you bring in a culture that doesn't integrate with the ones you've built. Right? And I think, quite frankly, I think we've done a really good job. You, everyone has done a great job with that. So that's been a tremendous experience for all of us the last three years. We're going to continue to evolve our service offerings. Frank, Sam, John, they'll get into that more later. But we're going to continue to push forward what we can do so we stay on the right side of that relevance curve. Right? We don't ever want to stop that. We continue to support each other in and out of the workplace. There's a lot going on in the world. The world's not perfect, but I'm not gonna be, we're not gonna be this like apologetic doom and gloom company. It's not who CDI is. There's things that need to be righted, and we're happy to do our part in that, but we're not gonna sit here and mire in a downward slope of negativity, right? And, and I, I don't think we do that. And if you do, you know, look, if you think that, let's talk to HR, let's, let's, let's work that out for you, right? We're gonna be positive, we're gonna be aggressive, we're gonna look to grow, and we're gonna have some fun. So I don't know what the next hand we get dealt is, we have competition that wants to take our lunch all day every day. They have their own kickoffs, probably not with Metallica and great music, right? But people want our business. This is a competitive business. Like, make no mistake about it. Every customer we have, somebody else wants. So number one, we have to play to win those hands. And we don't know what the hand will be, whether it's competition or recession. The only thing I do know is that we have to, we have to play to, to win the hand. We have got to play to win the hand. And the only way we can do that is together. So 
appreciate everything everybody does. Thank you for your time. Let's have some fun today. All right? Thanks. Yeah.